discuss whether the military is legitimate or moral. Well, basically, uh, my point of view is that the military is completely uh, insane. It needs to be downsized to about 10% of its present size just to, uh, you know, guard the borders and so on. And what they've been doing is completely out of the realm of rationality or, or necessity. Um, you'll notice that Israel has a problem of legitimacy. And uh, they've, they've actually passed laws, I heard the other day, uh, uh, making it a criminal offense to uh, 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 speak in a way that, under, that attacks the legitimacy of, uh, of Israel. And uh, it has to do with the BDS movement. And so they've, they've been going all around with, like whack-a-mole trying to uh, pass laws to uh, suppress the BDS movement around the world. Well, legitimacy is really an important thing, you know. And uh, that's why, I mean, judges, you know, order in the court, you have to, uh, every, it's your honor, right? You can't talk back to the judge or anything like that. It's totally uh, bolted down, you know, uh, enforced, uh, you know, uh, ritual to reinforce legitimacy. Uh, well, we can, uh, we can work on the uh, delegitimization of the military. Uh, I'd just like to offer a few reasons. I stood, uh, more than 500 times I stood on the overpass with eight foot wide uh, signs uh, or in street vigils, you know, uh, U.S. out of Iraq, U.S. out of Afghanistan, all this stuff, you know. And uh, I kind of made an obsession out of it. And I also happen to be an alcoholic. And uh, that was a good, a good activity in the morning to get my heart breathing. But, um, so I made up this song. The people of the world said no to war in February 2003. 10 million people uh, marched in the streets and, and 10 million people said no to the war. The United Nations said no to war, if you recall, the Iraq war. The Security Council said no. The weapons inspectors said no. Remember that? Even the CIA recommended against it. International law says no to war. Uh, U.S. law says no to the Constitution and uh, Article 6 and the treaties that we've signed. Uh, the largest countries all said no to war. India, China, just count them up, Russia. Turkey, the Germans and the French, the Europeans also said no. Uh, the Council of Churches said no. The Pope in Rome said no. The Catholics, Buddhists and Muslims, obviously they said no. Every religion said no to this to this uh, war in Iraq. And uh, so let's, you know, first of all, consider was it was it legitimate? If practically every institution in the world said that it wasn't legitimate, uh, but the uh, New York and Washington guys they did it anyway. So let's uh, let's remember who started the war, who actually did the war. Let's think back on that. You guys probably all remember all these things. The uh, Congress started the war. They uh, permitted the war to take place. Um, they did it. Why did they do it? They did it for their uh, party bosses, told them what to do, fall in line, the partisan Congress, because their party is their business. Uh, so they're willing to kill a million people for their donor base and kill a million people and to get a committee seat for themselves and boost up their career in the Congress. They're corrupt. This is a corruption. A corrupt Congress that's killing a million people for their own, uh, their own you know, uh, political arithmetic. Uh, the, uh, the Korean War wasn't self-defense, neither was Vietnam. The Iraq War wasn't self-defense. But the weapon makers, they pushed for war. They pushed for the war itself, not just for, to sell weapons, but for the war itself. Uh, because they can get the, uh, the money, the contracts. And the labor also supported the war. You notice there were very few unions marching against the Iraq War. Uh, oil people started the war. There were different elements in the oil industry who wanted, some of them wanted the oil. Some of them wanted the money. Some of them wanted to have a chaos to, so that there'd be a drive up the uh, price and drive down the supply. They just wanted to disrupt the supply. I mean, that was the whole thing with OPEC. They wanted, to, they wanted Saddam to, to shut down. He was producing too much oil, remember? There was a glut of oil. So there's all these different actors, but they were right in there. They said, let's have this war. You know, we didn't get to see it. It wasn't right on CNN, but they were in there. Now, the soldiers fought the war, millions of soldiers. Uh, and they did it for money. They did it for bonuses. They did it for the, uh, because that was their career. Why did they join? The uh, Department of Defense itself publishes studies on why uh, young people join the military. They, uh, you can uh, s search Google for the propensity to enlist. And uh, I mean, they do this every year. I mean, with regularity, they hire Madison Avenue, uh, you know, PR companies and universities and, and think tanks like the Rand Corporation to conduct research and, you know, and uh, studies on young people, why they enlisted. And they enlist uh, for, uh, to get a job and to get a career going. Do they enlist uh, so that they can uh, get some education? Uh, they enlist for a role, you know, for, for status, for, for something, it's to be someone in society because they don't have anything. Uh, and often they're unemployed. And basically these are material, uh, so that is corruption. 
if you're willing to go and kill people for money and for these things, that is, that is corruption. I did that. I was 18. It was the middle of the winter. Uh, corporate media, they uh, started the war. They were the ones who started the war with the propaganda and the lies, and it was the flags, and they reinforced every, uh, every element of the, uh, you know, the psychosis in this country. Rupert Murdoch, Fox News, CNN, NBC. The Israeli government pushed for the war with the AIPAC lobbyists who are, uh, have the veto over any policy in the country. More than half of the Congress attends the AIPAC. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and so, you know, like I mentioned this morning, whenever I hear the word, uh, the uh, domino theory, I automatically think, what do you think? It's discredited. So you, whenever, if you just think, of, whenever there's a word and you think of the, your response is going to be, then you can have about 100 of these laying on the table. And whenever I hear the word Israel, I always think groveling. Because what you can say is that Congress is groveling before the Israelis over and over and over again. When are they going to stop groveling? And if you keep saying Israel groveling, Israel groveling, then it spreads and, you know, and it gets everybody bad-mouthing Israel. Wall Street bankers, you know. When I was growing up, everybody knew that the banks had been the ones who started World War II. Think back what your grandparents told you. I mean, didn't everybody kind of, and especially World War I, didn't everybody know that it was the banksters who started the wars? And the financiers, you know, oh yeah, it was the industrialists. They wanted to uh, sell manufacturers. They wanted to sell weapons. But it was the finance sector that really actually promoted the war, to have a war. There's, you know, even a big war like World War II, it, tech, it, it takes sponsors. But I'll bet most ordinary Britons, Americans, they didn't know that until afterwards, mm -hmm. when they got analytical information Bingo. about yeah. what had actually happened. Well, if you think about the, the fact that prior to the Second World War, this country did not have a large standing army. Right. And it's always been an American tradition to not have a large standing army. Right. And it's only been since the inception of the, this national security state mm -hmm. after the Second World War that we have a continuous large uh, non, non, uh, you know, a standing were army. The empire until right. then. Right. The military-industrial complex is people who do things for money, or they do it in exchange for the other guy scratching their back in return. It's nothing. It really isn't really about war itself. When you talk about the military-industrial complex, so that's not the whole story of why we have wars, but it is this nasty little thing that's going on in our country uh, of people who. Uh, you know, they write legislation so they can get a job as a lobbyist and make money later. You know, this is uh, a business for them. So the idea of this diagram is to, uh, is to identify actors, what, what, not the actor it's, itself, like, uh, you know, uh, David Koch or J.P. Morgan or somebody, but actor types. So it's a little bit abstract. So what we have is actor types who systematically, uh, you know, the, the names of the people change over generations, but the same institution is there. It's a type of, a, a type of an actor that has a systemic uh, business of doing some particular thing in exchange for something else. Where did that chart come from? Yeah. It came from a bunch of discussions on the VFP list and, and kind of recruiting list. Also, you said Peace and Justice, we talked about it. And uh, so I would fix it up a little bit. And uh, Chuck Spinney in that film, uh, Inside the Pentagon, I asked him for his opinion. And at that point, it didn't even have the military on there. And he said, well, that's a pretty good diagram, but you know, I don't think it should have the military on it. <laughs> you know, that's all, it's so easy to overlook these things. Obviously, the Congress, yeah, it's it start, start, you know, that's right. Was, the Congress, somehow they keep getting elected. And this is the big mystery, mm -hmm. that we, you know, everybody wonders, how the hell do these guys get elected? Well, they get elected. <laughs> by some process, it has to do with voter, voters, right? Voters do vote. And I think another thing to think about with this whole thing is this doesn't require a war to function. You know, wars can come out of this, but this functions without a war, too. Mm -hmm. I tried to work backwards. Really what needs to be here, you need to have a picture, like the president might be up here somewhere, and, the Congre and he, he starts wars. Uh, and then the courts make rulings that allow wars to continue. Yeah, they belong on here somewhere. And part of the voter behavior would be the jingoistic veterans groups. All right, I think that's a good one. Yeah. So what, there's three things, there's three groups here, let's see. The media, the churches, and the schools. 
that are ideological, you know, uh, elements. Mm -hmm. There should be another arrow here. And then there should be like the VFW. Let's just do shorthand. Yeah, veterans organizations. Legion. Yeah, so we'll say veterans organizations. Mm -hmm. So we've got four cultural uh, institutions that influence voter behavior. And then voter behavior goes to So voter behavior, they, they, vote for, they vote the Congress in there, even though Congress has 10% approval rating, they keep voting for them over and over again. So how do they do that? Some people are concerned that their, their job matters, you know, that the economy's gonna go down. Let's say I'm in the real estate industry. Hey, I need somebody who's gonna keep the real estate bubble going. Maybe this needs to be broken up with some little subparts in there. Yeah. I don't think they could do it without the propaganda. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah it's not just not the possible. media, it's the, the, the movies. movies that glorify mm -hmm. yeah. war and, and military stuff. If you want to make a movie, the Pentagon will give you all the stuff yeah. you need. As long as There's your movie is pro-war. Yeah. Going way back. Yeah. 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 Movies, yeah. news. Yeah. Yeah. They it's not just Black Hawk Down. Your party stuff on the top, uh, the parties not only uh, control the appointments, but the parties actually control, on the left side, who is it that gets elected, who's, 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 able who's the run. nominee. Yeah. You know, we've got a congressperson uh, in our in Olympia, 10th district. Mm -hmm. I don't remember anybody clamoring to get Denny Heck nominated for Congress. Somehow he just appeared and the <laughs> Democratic Party said, this is going to be your nominee. I, t I mentioned this to, to a, uh, an active Democrat, they said, the Democratic Party didn't initiate. Denny Heck told the party that he was going to be the nominee, mm -hmm. and the party went along with that. Yeah. So it's there, it, it wasn't like you think of. But as, who told Denny Heck? Well, <laughs> I, yeah, who owns him? He's, he's not opposing so the. That, uh, and then who, the what, did, what did he get in return? So he got some he's money. Campaign. He's running campaign the, the right now because it's his election yeah. year. Oh. But but some money's so, coming back here somewhere. Yeah, but somehow what happens is is those politicians that even run they they don't run because folks in a room like this say, "Oh, we want to have uh, Ann be our next uh, uh, either Ann on the on the couch be our next 10th district representative." <laughs> somehow that that person is anointed and we never So had what to I, say. what I need for you to uh, uh, say so, is so, who's getting paid what and what exactly they do in 30 seconds or less. Yeah. So just get another another yeah, brick well, on the wall. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Is, is, is you, you have voter behavior, but we don't know how the nominees are. The nominees come out of somewhere. Well, I just said that the reason why they put that guy on the ballot is because they're getting money out of He's the uh, be, money out of the military yeah, contracts on the basis. That's a, why. Uh, uh, Murray and Cantwell just to uh, support the basis and, yeah. and uh, Boeing contracts. And, and that's what this guy does, too. See, so, that's, you know, there's yeah. the uh, defense contractors. Yeah. yeah. The defense contractors pay, no wait, they pay the, uh, they pay the uh, parties. Election yeah. campaign. That's what they do. They yeah. pay the parties to get their candidates. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and that, that seems to... So let's, let's just talk about, just, uh, this is a chart of corruption. Yeah. These are people who are getting, getting yeah. something in exchange yeah. for something else. This is a business chart. Yeah. It's a business plan. Yeah. <laughs> if we could get their original plan, we wouldn't have to do all this work. Yeah, it's it's hanging in the boardroom all over the country. They are a instance of both actor types. Are they all so totally ingrained and embedded that we can't figure out where it starts? No. That's the, that's the, uh, the thing that people believe is that it's too uh, hard to uh, analyze. But it really isn't once you get a uh, language working to, uh, to take it apart, you know, uh, piece by piece. But, in, you know, th this is the way the mind works. We can't remember things or learn things unless we, I mean, this is debatable, but I believe it's the verbal part of the brain is that we think with. We actually think in language, you know. And so we think, you know, I even think that I myself is my verbal identity because that's the only self that I can remember from day to day. And I won't remember what happened this afternoon unless I, unless I remember it in words. And so this is just like that. We have to come up with the words and get it de get it described so that the, then we can uh, be able to drive in a pick somewhere and start breaking it apart and, you know, look at it more and delegitimize it. Because it is corruption. Mm -hmm. It's corruption. You know, there, there's a, a document, and I can't remember the name of the group, but they basically say to deal with climate change, we take these same corporations from the military-industrial complex, rewrite the contracts, we can even give them more money than they're making now, 
and they'll do what we need to do to change how we get energy. They're in it for the money, most of them. Mm -hmm. We have we have a healthcare industrial complex. Yeah. Yeah. We have an education industrial yeah. complex. Hey, I'm all for it. Let's have some more industrial complexes, but let's just not have them go killing people. You know, yeah. that's kind of where I'm. You know, I'm not trying to abolish corruption itself, or you know, everything's corrupt. You know? <laughs> but let's not we let's not kill live. people. We need to live. Carry away, yeah. <laughs> Along those lines, I don't know which how you would say this, but. The theory goes is is that there's one trillion dollar value to Afghanistan in minerals alone. So there's going to be oh, yeah. so a, there's going to be let's yeah. say a thousand of those global corporations that are. There's going no to be oil companies yeah. on here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. no oil yeah. resource. Yeah. No, but yeah. resources. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, oil, it's, it's not necessarily oil only. Only. It's not necessarily oil only. only. It's also the you know cell phone transistors. Yeah. And other stuff. Yeah. That's resource extraction. Resource yeah. extraction. They're, they're rare rare minerals thing. that they use right. for electronic consumer oh. devices. Mm -hmm. Those are in Africa where we're building more military bases. Right. Uh, all of a sudden we have Africa. Africa command. We want to be able to control the the raw materials that go into your cell phone. Well, so there's uh, companies that want to make money. That they want to uh, own it. Mm -hmm. In other words, they want to privatize it away from nationalized. It is. It is our resources, our minerals, our oil landed under somebody else's land. Mm -hmm. You know the cartoons. Yep. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Jimmy Carter was the president who yeah. declared that that yeah. we have the right to use the military yeah. to get resources anywhere. Vital national interest. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you have privatizers that the same types of people who uh, abolished the Soviet Union so they could privatize their oil. Mm -hmm. But then you also have the Halliburtons and the, you know the drillers and and the sellers like the Exxon. Contractors. The contractors, and then you have Exxon who sells it. And they're the one who actually gets the money, right? They don't want to get. They're the one who gets to operate the cash register. Mm -hmm. So there's all these different parts of the oil industry. It makes it so damn hard to figure yeah. out what's going on. And Antonia Uhas gives hour-long talks on that. She is so good. This is actually very concrete. This is Todd talking to my next-door neighbor who works at Boeing, and telling him you really have to quit working for Boeing. <laughs> yes, I know it's a commercial airplane district, mm -hmm. but you still have to quit working for Boeing because it's the same company that builds the bombers. They have the exact same bal balance sheet. And so this is Todd talking to his other next-door neighbor. You know, you should not join. I told you not to join, and you're back on leave. Well, I, I want you to quit. You shouldn't be in the military. And I'm talking to their parents. And this is why, because what you're doing is corrupt. You're in a, a corrupt institution that kills people. And, you know, somebody has to do the hard work. And that is telling people the truth, you know? And uh, that's what this is about. This is explaining how a whole lot of people are all behaving in a corrupt fashion. So it's face-to-face, -face, uh, you know, uh, argument in the, in the verbal level. And they don't like it. They resist it. They give you all kinds of And then they go home and they just, uh, they, uh, they, a year later, they they're different because they know that some people out there are on their game. So, so it, it's worth it, even though you don't get any. All you get is 100% negative feedback from the person and from everybody else in the peace movement. I'm not in the peace movement. I'm in the anti-war movement. I'm confrontational. I tell people what they shouldn't be doing, and it's corrupt. And uh, that's that's kind of my approach. You know, I'm just kind of uh, uh, oppositional. That's so so yeah, but so so there's some cultural underpinnings in here. Um, that that um, that I even if they're not like discrete mm. entities with an exchange of money, there are things that still allow the the, the military industrial complex. To okay, so my response is this: if you draw them a picture and it shows a bunch of money going to a soldier, I'm, and then you have you know the uh, soldier killing people, that's his job, and then you see that the the reason that they killed them was not self defense, but it was for oil or for one of these other re reasons. Then you can, if you draw them a picture and make it excruciatingly clear, you know, then it makes it hard for them to escape and to have yeah. rationalizations. Yeah. What you're trying to do is to smash down those rationalizations. Yeah. No, I, that's fine. But I, I'm just saying that there's some other elements that, that I think are real that allow the military industrial complex to persist, and and they're not they're not named. Yeah, and you're naming right. things, and I think we can. There are some other things that can be named. I know that that's yeah. totally very important. I okay. agree. All the okay. psychological. Well, I think this yeah. type of analysis it could be useful with a lot of people, but I also agree with what Bert and Glenn were saying. Oh, I do too. I think I think I think the one of the prime things underlying American culture is fear. You know, fear of other, fear of losing your job, fear of whatever. It's controlled in such a way. 
to continue the fear because if people are fearful, they're they're only working from the amygdala level in the yeah. brain, and they're much more like easy to lead mm -hmm. and suggest things, mm -hmm. and they don't they don't use this the frontal cortex. They don't rationally look at things. They work, just work from that from that level. Mm -hmm. So I think that fear. If we can raise our children to not be afraid, we can get rid of the military. Yeah, I'm not really that worried about the individual soldier because they don't have very much influence over the uh, uh, policy to, to make war. Mm -hmm. And they, more than anything else, are just like a big cost center. But the trouble is that most of the military are, are uh, career military now. So if you, um, you know, the average person, if you take all the military, the average person's been in there for six or eight years just, to, just by arithmetic, you know, because they're lifers. And uh, they are problematic people. They, you know, they have a lot of rationaliz rationalization that they're helping the country or whatever it may be, right? But they're wrong because there hasn't been a single war that was self-defense since the year one, since the middle of the early part of the last century. Totally, totally agree. For going to college, they cut that back. There used to be more <coughs> uh, funding for scientific research in college. Mm -hmm. Funding now goes through big corporations and the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. So if the Pentagon wants some kind of research into physics, mm -hmm. because they can make a weapon out of something, then they'll do that, but the research so benefits go back to the, the college system should be on the children? No, the Congress, no. Congress no. says no. the budget, yeah. Congress defunded. Privatization yeah. of education yeah. maybe should you got, go on. You got there, that, that's this part, is of part of it. That's part of it. Part but of but the, 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 what makes it hard for people to go to college is Congress has made those decisions. Yeah. They don't want people to go to college except Unless they sign fund, up their funding, lives. funding through the, the, the military. But they defunded federal aid for college. States don't fund it adequately. We'd rather keep our property taxes low uh, so that people who have multiple homes can afford to have homes and not pay taxes. And this guy, Ryan, his new budget is to beef up military spending, yeah. lower taxes on yeah. the rich, yeah. and cut social spending. It sounds like uh, Reagan. Yeah. Voodoo I don't economics. understand. Beef Democrats up voodoo budget. economics. State, beef up it, even more? We already s out. so much more. Well, we Ryan. Yeah, Ryan well, but now it's going to be. It's vice president. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, with it's all it's social spending. But, but that's what they're aiming for. State legislators pass the same budget of either party. But the they military keeps fight. winning. So military I know there's wins. lots of complexes. <laughs> military always so why wins do they keep the winning? Business. Why do they always win and they get more than half of the budget? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I hope so. so supposed to be one of the focuses today is let's come up with some ideas of ways that we can affect this process. What what can we do that can have some effect on delegitimizing militarism in this country? So. An, an indirect approach, and, and uh, Louise was with me when we heard James uh, Lawson say, you're never going to defeat the military-industrial complex directly, you have to do it indirectly, and that means you have to get the American people organized. Yeah. There's a good book called Poor People's Movement Movements that looks at uh, four, um, let's see, the civil rights movement, the labor movement, the women's rights, I think, and welfare rights movement, and looks at how they developed in the situations that they were in and look at different factors. And almost all of them, um, it required a specific focus at a specific time in history to happen. So I think that's one of the things we need to look for to organize these people we're talking about. We need, there needs, we need to come up with, we, don't, we can't make up, but we need to notice what it is that these people are interested in that we can organize them around. Yeah. So we need to be paying attention yeah. to that. Yeah. And, we, and we need to be willing to, uh, to um, spend the time and energy in doing it. And, um, one of the reasons that all of those movements to some extent petered out was that the powers that be realized that by co-opting the leaders of those movements, bringing them into federal programs to help the poor and 
those kind of things. They took the steam out of those movements. So we need yeah. to we need to continue with the radical viewpoint. It, you know, you can't, and that's the problem with the liberal viewpoint is that liberals think that you can work with the powers that be and accomplish a radical change, and it can't happen. So I, I think, and, and those are those are generalities, but I think we need to be looking for that for that. And so, to focus. my mind, the, uh, what came up to me after doing all the overpasses and stuff, I switched into making videos, and uh, the reason I did that is because. Uh, I felt that this, this kind of change that John's talking about has to be preceded by awareness. You know, mm -hmm. if people don't have awareness, they're not going to come and join in a, in a, in a movement, you know. And uh, I noticed that people weren't listening to my voice because it's so peevish and uh, always uh, sounds negative and everything, so I just go and record other people now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the trouble is, I just want to warn you that, you know, the, the trouble is that there aren't enough people who are um, standing up and giving good, coherent talks. There's really a shortage of, of talent, you know, and uh, so like Ed goes, oh my God, I don't have anything this week to put on pirate TV. It has to be good enough to go nationwide. We can't just put on another local thing, you know. Uh, and, and this is Seattle, you know, if we don't have enough speakers once a week to go on TV, that's pathetic, you know. Uh, I mean, Larry's good as, in, you know, I got enough here to maybe Ed will put it on a show, just put three or four of them together. But uh, so the reason I'm saying that is that I want all of you to think about what you're what you're saying and make. I know you're good at you know like the uh, one minute soundbite because you say you you participate. Try to stretch yourself to a five minute rant. <laughs> Do it in the mirror, you know, or just <laughs> inflict it on somebody in the coffee shop or something. And uh, but don't be don't be ashamed of yourself. Go ahead and rant, you know, and uh, and fix it and yeah. rant again, you know. Because hmm. uh, that's how uh, you get I think big... we need to get rid of our egos and be willing to be yes. fools. Oh yes, yeah. yes, yes. Cindy yes. 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 and I do it to each other all the time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, talked... about politics, not not against each other. You talked about. Um, what's changed from the 60s when there was much more resistance in the military compared to now. And what's different to me is the 60s was a, when I grew up was a, very, a fairly promising time. I paid off my student loan while I was still a graduate exactly. student. And the economic situation now is much worse. Yeah.